When it comes to fashion, you guys know that I talk a lot about the budget. I talk about the money portion when it comes to shopping, making sure that we can pay for the item, that we're not going into debt for the item, that we're not wasting money on impulse buys, all those kinds of things. If fashion, makeup, or really anything brings you joy, I think it's important that we know how we're paying for that. But in today's video, I wanted to share with you my other criteria that I think about before I decide to buy something. After all, when something does catch my eye, it's not necessarily the price that I'm looking at first. And I wanna thank Audible for sponsoring today's video, but I'll talk about them more a little later on. These criteria, I don't necessarily think about them in this order, but they are things that I think about before I decide to buy something, or at least something that I take note of in the whole decision-making process. When it comes to shopping for clothing, I really am focusing on having less but better pieces, higher quality pieces, and ideally pieces that I want to survive any declutter I decide to do later on. So I don't necessarily look at these in sequential order, but they are all things that you can think about if you're deciding to buy something or not, besides looking at the price or the, ooh, I like that factor. The first thing I like to look at is what is it made of? I do think it's important to get an understanding of what your garments are made out of for not only the quality of the item, but how it's going to wash, what the care instructions are, how it's going to feel, and if you're gonna sweat your off in them. When it comes to fabric and material for me, it really depends what I'm looking for. When it comes to things like denim, t-shirts, and button downs, I really prefer an 100% cotton or organic cotton fiber. And then when it comes to things like coats and outerwear, I like real, I do prefer real leather over vegan leather. I've tried it, it falls apart. It's not, it doesn't really last long in my opinion. And for overcoats in particular, instead of things like a polyester blend, I really am looking for things like 100% wool, wool cashmere, wool cashmere silk blend. Real fibers that are meant to keep you warm or cool instead of just trapping in heat and making you sweat and then in the winter you're even colder than you were to begin with. And if it is polyester or rayon elastane, I like to see if the manufacturer is noted that these are recycled at the very least. I'm just looking at what my blazers are made of. My Babaton agency blazer that I wear all the time is a wool elastane blend, and then the lining again is Cupro, which I guess Aritzia is doing more of. This one is the same. So I'm not saying I don't wear polyester, but before I buy something, I do go down and check to see what it's made of, to see if it will suit my lifestyle or serve the purpose that I'm looking for. The second thing I pay attention to is tailoring. When I'm talking about tailoring, yes, I try to consider things like the way it's sewn together, seam lines, that kind of thing, construction, but I'm not a seamstress. I don't know anything about sewing, but when I talk about tailoring, I'm talking more about the fit. So for example, I have the Durf Avenue Favorite Pants in black, and I also have the Aritzia Effortless Pants also in black. At first glance, these two pants are pretty much the exact same, but to me, the way they're tailored and constructed and the fit is completely different. The Durf Avenue trousers have a little bit more of a slouchy fit. They're meant to fit looser in the waist. They have a sort of drop crotch, so it's a very like menswear kind of slouchy silhouette to them. Whereas the effortless pants, especially when you fit true to size, they definitely do fit a little bit more tailored. The, the rise isn't as high. And to me, they give off a bit of a different look. It just looks a little bit more, I don't wanna say the word cleaner, but it just looks a little bit more, it's just different, it's like tighter. I don't know how to describe it, but that's what I'm getting at when I say the word tailoring. That's probably why I also have a lot of same but difference in my wardrobe because it is the same, you know, black t-shirt, white t-shirt, blazer, whatever, but it's the fit and the construction of the garment that's slightly different, that gives off a different silhouette, a different vibe. And that's what I'm paying attention to before I buy something. The third thing I think about is versatility. I really have let go of the whole like one hit wonder dressing. I don't have a lot of garments in my wardrobe that I could really only wear one type of way. And that's because my wardrobe is made up of pretty much three colors and all basics. There's not a lot of patterns, embellishments, even texture in my wardrobe. I mean, this is probably the most like out there piece that I own. Even before I bought this, I wanted to think about how it would mix and match in my wardrobe. I can wear it with jeans and a tank top. I can wear it with trousers if I wore skirts and dresses, which I don't, but if I did, then I could layer this over top. I could even wear these with shorts in the summer. 
So that's what I'm getting at when I say versatility. And if you do own one hit wonder sort of occasion pieces, maybe there's ways to get creative with that piece so you can wear it a little bit more often than just that, you know, one event. Let's get that cost per wear going. Just taking a small break from the outfits that you're seeing in this video to thank today's sponsor, Audible. You guys know I've been using Audible for years. It's my favorite way to read books. I recently finished listening to Make Your Bed by Admiral William H. McRaven, a retired US Navy SEAL. This read has been on my wish list for quite some time and it's really, really quick. You can finish it in a few hours. It's just got a lot of really inspiring and actionable tidbits to really prove to yourself that it's really the little things that can change your life. He says if you- If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride and it will encourage you to do another task and another. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that the little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you'll never be able to do the big things right. So if you wanna change the world, start off by making your bed. And if you wanted to give Make Your Bed a listen, perhaps while making your bed, you can do that using Audible. Audible offers an amazing selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers, new releases, pretty much anything you might be looking for. The Audible app makes it easy to listen anytime, anywhere. I listen every day while I'm walking to and from work. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep, and all Audible members now get access to a huge selection of titles that are included, so you can listen all you want. So if you wanna try Audible completely for free for 30 days, you can and click the link in the description below or text Christina Machas to 500 500. Again, that's Christina Machas to 500 500. Thanks, Audible. Okay, I'm gonna finish filming this B roll for you guys. Number four is more of a question and it's how is this different? You guys have seen my wardrobe. I have a lot of duplicates. I'm a huge fan of duplicate dressing, but for me, my version of duplicate dressing isn't necessarily getting the same t-shirt in a bunch of different colors. It's getting different t-shirts in different cuts, shapes, and silhouettes in the same color. <laughs> By this point, I really know what it is I like and I know what it is I gravitate towards. So if I am considering adding something new into my wardrobe, I wanna know what is different about it. What is this new thing giving that I feel like my current wardrobe isn't? So for you, it might be looking for something that is completely unique. Maybe this piece is unlike all the other pieces in your wardrobe and that's why you think it's special and that's why you want it. But I think it's important to ask ourselves what's different about this thing and am I really gonna wear it as much or more than what I've got right now? The fifth thing I question is whether or not this item is filling a gap in my wardrobe. Even though I'm pretty happy with my wardrobe and I am abundant in my duplicates, there are actually a few pieces that I am missing from my wardrobe that I do want to add. For example, I'd like to add a brown leather belt and a black leather belt with some gold hardware because I find that the belt that I have, this Western one that you guys have seen for years, even though I love it and it's super cool, it doesn't always complete an outfit in the way that I want it to or communicate the vibe or the look. So I wanna add something a little bit more classy and classic into my wardrobe. And so once that gap is identified, I do the whole thing of, you know, putting it on the wish list, choosing one that I think I like, earmarking it for later, and then just giving it a bit of time and budgeting to decide if I still want it and if I'm ready to buy it. But sometimes the item doesn't really fill a gap. Sometimes it's a full on duplicate and sometimes you just want it, which is totally okay. And I think that's when we get into the question of, you know, what's it made out of? How many times am I gonna wear it? And can I pay for the thing? Number six is quality. This to me is difficult to explain, but I kind of know what it is I'm looking for. So the way I measure quality, again, because I don't really have a strong understanding of what like good stitching looks like in the sense of like, oh, there's certain kinds of stitching that's better than others. There's ways to put on buttons. There's kinds of buttons that are maybe higher quality than others, things like that. So when I say quality, I'm also considering things like the weight of the garment. Does it feel cheap on? Is the stitching really loose and sloppy? Do the zippers feel flimsy and low quality? Is it see-through? Does it feel really thin and flimsy? So these are the things that I am thinking about 
when I am either trying on a garment or even looking at it online. Because sometimes if you do look closely on the models, you can see that things are see-through. You can see that maybe it's not that flattering the way it falls even on the model. But I think you can really feel the difference in terms of a high quality weighty garment versus one that is like a little bit more cheaply made, fast fashion-y, Shein style piece. Number seven is brand loyalty. I've shopped at Aritzia for years and I love their pieces. I know the fit really well. I know what it is I like. They're like my go-to for blazers, things like that. So that's kind of what I mean for brand loyalty. I guess it would be more brand familiarity. But now I'm also trying to pay attention to the ethics behind a brand and focusing more on small business and shopping secondhand and shopping from vintage resellers, things like that. I think I would definitely rather put my money into a small business or a smaller brand than I would these larger ones that don't really need my help. So I find this year I've really been enjoying shopping from like all vintage denim. That's where I get all of my vintage Levi's. She's a vintage reseller from California. Absolutely love her. Or even local brands like Cotton. They are based in Toronto and they also follow ethical and sustainable business practices too. So that's a bonus. And number eight is I consider the measurements and the fit description. So a lot of times when you shop on these websites, there is usually a description of the item, how it fits, and very important, the measurements of the item. This I take into account, especially when I'm looking at trousers and jeans in particular. So what I'm looking for when it comes to garment descriptions is if they describe it as being oversized or to fit very flowy or meant to fit looser in the waist and tighter in the leg or you know things like that because it really helps guide what size I wanna get. Again, I really do prefer in a lot of cases more oversized pieces. So this helps me decide if I wanna buy something true to size or if I wanna size up. And then when it comes to buying trousers and jeans especially, I always wanna look at things like inseam and the rise. So if it's described as low rise, I'm not going there, but oftentimes they will describe things as mid rise or high rise. And for me, my cutoff is about 10 inches or more. And then inseam, I'm usually a 30 inch inseam. So that's the length of the garment from the groin down to the ankle. If it's long or described as like tall, then again, that's really gonna help me determine the sizing that I wanna go for, or if I even wanna go for it at all. If it's available, I like to look at the reviews. More and more I'm finding that websites are publishing reviews of their garment online. There is a wealth of information in those reviews. So if they're available to you, do not sleep on them. This I find really helpful because people will give feedback on whether something is true to size or if it runs narrow or small or big. They'll tell you if it's see-through, if it feels really cheap. There is a wealth of information in the reviews and I tend to steer clear of something if anything gets less than four out of five stars. If we're in the three, three and a half star category, I'm probably not going there. And number 10 is that I just like it. Sometimes you just really don't need reason more than that. And there's nothing to feel guilty about if that is the reason. Go for it. So those are the things that I think about before I decide to buy a piece of clothing that isn't necessarily just about the money. Again, I really do believe it's important to be as mindful and as intentional as we can be before we decide to buy anything and bring it into our home. But when it comes to clothing, I hope some of these things helped you gain a little bit more insight on when I decide to buy and kind of what my thresholds are. Thank you again to Audible for sponsoring this video. And if you did wanna give Audible a try for free for 30 days, you can click the link in the description down below or text Christina Machas to 500 500. Again, that's Christina Machas to 500 500. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.